early in the morning as the sun is coming up and the dew is on the grass, it is so easy to appreciate the magnificence of God's creation. It's just all around us, through us, and in us, just holy, holy, holy. Early in the morning, we just feel that song rise. But God is not just in the sunrise. God is in the fumbling efforts of people like you and me, soccer moms and t-ball dads and teachers and lawyers and buyers and sellers and bag ladies and wanderers, the joyous and the hurting, individuals and families, young and old, confused, absolutely sure, not quite sure, we're sure just yet. All of us whisper God's creation, holy, holy, holy. And all the saints adore us. Some days it is just hard to see God behind the headline. Sometimes it's hard to see God through the mist or even the darkness, sadness and frustration, confusion, ego, anger, hurt get in our way. We can't hear holy, holy, holy. But this morning, we are invited to embrace God's creation, to find the divine in the darkness, discover that we ourselves are light, light for each other. You and me, just like the sunrise, we reveal God. We praise God's name in earth and sky and sea. Simply put, we are here together right now, spiritually connected to each other, that we might recognize that we are holy, that all about us is holy. The holy is here, right now. Welcome to Jubilee. Thank you. 
Good news? Oh, so much good news. How about Val and Drew Winters attending a wedding last weekend? You know, for their son Grant, who married Laura. That is really good news. Before you have a garage sale, You've got to set it up. Two days of glorious madness, amazing volunteers, and so much stuff. We've been waiting three years for the garage sale, and this is good news. And if that wasn't enough, the Shining Waters Regional Council celebration last weekend included Reverend Brianne being blessed in her ministry and the now Reverend Jim Harbell being ordained. Oh yeah, and because it was Pentecost and because it's just generally good news, there was dancing. Good news indeed. Some folks would like us to do our acknowledgements more quickly. 
Some would like us to skip them altogether, because we know already. Others find the words life-giving. Well, today, let's skip our formal acknowledgements. But let us take a moment to look around our community and notice that we come from many different places with diverse perspectives, differing wisdom, and expressions of our humanity. We are together gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, straight, cis, hetero, binary, non-binary, fluid, and ever-changing. We reflect the diversity and depth of God's love in creation, of God's action in the world, of God's hope for us all. We are all descended from our ancestors. Some were here before history was written, lives and spirit deeply entwined with the land. Some came looking for new life, for hope and promise. Some of us kept our promise to live together peaceably and respectfully. Many did not. Attitudes, habits, and systems have evolved that benefit some more than others. Provide some a place at the table, while others are made to look on. We are Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat. We are Mississaugas of the Credit. We are settlers and refugees. We are disabled and diverse. We are African, Asian, European, Indigenous, and more. We are God's children with love and wisdom to share, rifts to repair, and trust to earn. And we gather to recognize each other, nurture each other, and discover the love and power of God in each other and in all that we do together. This is what restores our souls and gives us hope. I hope that you know where to find us on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We have podcasts and vlogs and a number of other things that help support and nurture virtual digital community. This is our digital Sunday service. It has the same theme and similar content to our in-person worship, but it is uniquely created for you, our digital community. So thank you for being part of Jubilee and sharing our service with others as we build and shape digital community. We are always open to your ideas. Jubilee United Church also gathers in person for community activities and for worship, and we have a masks optional policy, which means that masks are not required, but we do respect and appreciate those who choose to wear a mask or maintain social distancing. Most folks are not masked. Now, here's what's coming up. Next Friday, June the 9th, A Taste of Syria, our fundraising dinner in support of Jubilee's efforts to sponsor the Al Dahul family, Simon, Noor, Jad, and Ryan, to Canada. You really don't want to miss it. The meal is a typical home-style Syrian chicken dish with hummus and fatouche, prepared by Simon's sister, Hamsa, and brother-in-law, Basim, who are co-sponsoring the Al Dahuls with Jubilee. We also have vegetarian and gluten-free options available. Reverend Brianne Swan will be performing a full set of music of both original songs and covers. There will be a silent auction with a whole bunch of different items, including a brand new treadmill valued at $1,500. Tickets are $30 each and can be purchased on Eventbrite or by contacting Diane at the church office. There will also be an opportunity at the event to offer further donations that are eligible for a tax receipt. And of course, we're still looking for some volunteers to help out. So if you're available and interested, please email Reverend Brianne Swan at bswan at jubileeunited.ca. Also coming up, Thursday, June the 15th at 2 p.m., we are hosting an afternoon tea for our friends, particularly those who find it hard to get out to Jubilee. For some, this might be the first time back or simply an opportunity to see friends that we haven't seen in a while. You are invited and encouraged to bring a friend. Transportation is available as required. There will be coffee, tea, light sweets, and live music presented by the West Enders. If you've never heard Neil or Lynn before, well, you're in for a real treat. You'll probably want to sing along, and we won't stop you. Music, tea, sweets, and friends. Can you imagine a better way to spend your afternoon? It would help if you'd let us know that you're coming so that we have enough tea. 
So you can sign up on the list at the church on Sunday, or you can call the church office at 416-447-6846. For more information or to arrange transportation, you can contact me, Rev. Norm Seeley, at the church by phone, or email me at nseeley at jubileunited.ca. You can also contact me to volunteer to help, because you know what? I could use a little help. After church on Sunday, June 18th, we're having a barbecue. Hot dogs, hamburgers, maybe some sweets left over from the Thursday tea. You never know. We just want to get the head start on summer and have some fun before summer takes some of us off in new directions. We'll have something for the kids, something for elders, and everyone in between. So please, mark it on your calendar and plan to join us. And if that wasn't enough, Definitely Not Church will be back on Wednesday, June the 21st at 7.30 p.m. The Howling Heretics will take you on a whirlwind run through the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and about 20 pop songs. There will also be a barbecue at 6.30 p.m. Probably leftovers from Sunday. But maybe not. <laughs> we can promise you a hot dog, some music, and a few laughs. All you have to do is join us, Wednesday, June the 21st. Continuing until the end of June, you are invited to share your hope and your faith. Many people find it hard to put their faith into words, but perhaps if we share some words, we just might inspire each other and have something to say when a neighbor or grandchild asks, what do you believe in, Grandma? You're invited to email me at nclie at jubileunited.ca and share with me what gives you hope. I will share your words in upcoming digital services and on the hope board in the foyer at Jubilee. You can be anonymous if you choose, just let me know. I would also invite you to describe your faith in 20 words or less, and I will include your words in the digital service and put them up on the faith board in the foyer at Jubilee. Again, you can be anonymous if you choose. And then to share some of our thoughts and experiences, we will have an in-person gathering at Jubilee on Tuesday, June the 13th at 7 p.m. And there we will gather and talk about, well, what's up on the faith and hope boards and what we think ourselves, sharing and building a vocabulary together. There's no judgment, there's no debate, just the sharing of what we believe. And I'm really looking forward to it. We will also meet by Zoom on Thursday, June the 15th at 7 p.m. and do exactly the same thing. Talk about faith and hope. So please let me know that you're coming and I will send you the Zoom link. The link will also be available on the Jubilee website. Oh, and please, let's not forget pictures. <laughs> Things that you love. Faces that make you smile. Life all around you. We absolutely love your pictures and of course, your limericks. Limericks. Five lines to make us think, make us wonder, or simply make us smile. Poets old and new are emerging all the time. This week, we have three limericks for the Trinity and another one from Tom. So how about it? Why not give it a try? Pictures and limericks can all be sent to me at nclie at jubileeunited.ca. As we conclude, I invite you to share the responsibility for this ministry that is Jubilee United Church. You're probably already part. It may be even more than you know. The way that you listen to others and welcome new folks. The way that you add to the community just by showing up online or in person. Your being here matters. You share what happens at Jubilee and that has impact. You're volunteering in things ranging from singing in the choir to serving coffee on Sundays, setting up the garage sale, reading scripture for worship, sorting clothes or food donated for our neighbors, be one of the people who shares their faith and lets others know that they can grow in their faith at Jubilee. You make our ministry vital and relevant. Your wisdom, experience, and compassion provide ways for others to experience God's love and God's hope for the future. Your financial support also keeps us vital and provides hope for the future. Things like legacy gifts and bequests well, they promise that Jubilee will continue to be open, embracing the neighbor and sharing the love of God with future generations. Your contributions right now through PAR, pre-authorized remittance, check, e-transfer to admin at jubileeunited.ca, through canadahelps.org, 
or shared in person on Sunday through cash or church envelopes are acts of love, appreciated not just by the others at Jubilee, but by the whole community as well. We are Jubilee United Church in response to God's call to grow in faith and love our neighbors. And we really couldn't do it without you and your generous support. Thank you, and God bless you. It takes the work of many people at many different levels and layers of the denomination to help us to live into what it means to be church faithfully and creatively in the 21st century. At the annual meeting of Shining Waters Regional Council last weekend, Toronto United Church Council presented Jubilee's Pam Locke with an award for her longtime commitment and work in the area of church development and strengthening congregations. This work was in addition to Pam's longtime dedication to education and students in the former Southeast Presbytery. At Jubilee, Pam is lead on outreach, Broadview subscriptions, and brings us the Minute for Mission, describing the life-changing work of the United Church's Mission and Service Fund every month. And so, as the Christ candle is lit this morning, we celebrate Pam. Thank you, Pam, for all your dedication and efforts to support those within the church to be the best they can be, and laying the foundation for congregations to thrive as best they can. You are part of Christ's light in the world. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 1. Read by old friends, Reverend Ann Denisio, Pat Lanchi, Carrie Graham, Judy Wells, and Reverend Marlene Britton. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seeds in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night 
and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and it indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age.
Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your eyes. And God, may I never lightly presume to preach your word. And may we never lightly presume to hear your word. For in your word is abundant life. Amen. It's, it's Trinity Sunday. <laughs> yes! Yippee! About time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Right? I mean, come on. I mean, people, people love it. It's, we're all, we're all perichoresis this and circumcession that, philoloque here, Nicene Creed there, and subordinate clauses. <laughs> Man, even more than Santa, we love a good subordinate clause at this festive time of the year. <laughs> you know, the one church was actually divided by the understanding of the Trinity. We split east to west. All sorts of folks have been included and excluded, have been slapped and embraced as a result of their ability to communicate through Trinitarian nature of God. <laughs> and some of you are sitting there right now going, uh, do I need to keep watching this? Should I just maybe click this off? I don't want to get slapped, and, and I don't understand, because like, I, I, I'd say that I believe in the Trinity, or, or I don't believe in the Trinity, but I don't get it. Where in the Bible can I find it? And some of you, might be thinking, oh, finally, let's get some slapping. Yes, we're getting this done. Norm is going to explain the Trinity, and then we're done. Faith is figured out, sorted up. We will heal all the rifts in the church, and we will settle on a universal theology. Oh, wow. We will finally have our proof for the existence of God, and we can shout down all those people who doubt us and won't believe. <laughs> It's going to be great. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No slaps. Probably not a lot of healing. I'm not even all that confident that anyone's going to come away with an improved understanding when we're done. I know. Why are you even here? I'm sorry. See, the Trinity is kind of disappointing. I mean, to begin with, you can't really find it in the Bible. I mean, there are a few letters, right? Not actually describing the Trinity, just sort of invoking it. Like, well, well you heard one today. Sincerely, your friend, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, sealed with a kiss. There is the story of creation that we celebrated today from the beginning of Genesis. Did you recognize in that story that the wind... The spirit that moved upon the waters, it was present in the creation without having to be created. Hmm. Did you catch that? I mean, it's kind of cool. and That's kind of a little bit Trinity-ish. Now, of course, there's no Jesus seemingly in that story unless Jesus gets to be the wind. Or it, it's just God and, and, and wind. And, and seriously, don't stop with Genesis. Like, just keep reading all the way through the Bible because you will discover, oh, Parables and stories of prophets and kings and miracles and metaphors and liturgy and lament and history and hokum. But the Trinity, not so much. And as for some kind of proof or an argument for the existence or proof of God's goodness, not there. The Trinity is not really proof of anything. 
other than hard, contemplative, passionate work. Yeah. See, the Trinity is a concept. It's, it's theology. It's people thinking about God and how can I describe God and how do I relate to God. The Trinity is, is, is the result of some very wise, loving people sharing their experience of God. And, and then together trying to make sense of it in a way that they could communicate to somebody else that we'd go, oh, I, yeah, right. And the truth is, I'm not really qualified to be in their number. So maybe I would simply ask you if you'd like to, I don't know, dance or build with Lego. Now, now I say dance because the word that I used before at the beginning, uh, uh, the one that we use so often, you know, all of us, this uh, perichoresis. Well, perichoresis kind of means dancing around and around and around. The Eastern or the Orthodox Church describes the Trinity as three dancers and they're holding hands and they're dancing in joy and in harmony and in personhood. They are who they are in relationship to each other. They are a social community whose relationship is so intimate that they live in and through each other. Yeah. Understanding and embracing the Trinity that way, it's, it's, it's like a dance. Now, of course, if you don't want to dance, that's okay. We can build Lego. I love Lego. And it doesn't have to be a name brand. It could just, we can build with anything you want. We, we need to create a structure, a strong structure, like a, well, like a triangle. More than isosceles, we're talking about an equilateral triangle. Sides and angles all the same, all connected. No single point greater than the other two points. You can move them around. It doesn't really matter. There's not one on top and two below. It's just three equal points, equal parts. The Western church would use that kind of triangle to describe the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, you wanna dance? You wanna build. And we might as well pick one or the other because, because this Trinity thing is never actually going to settle an argument and it's not gonna sell the faith to anybody. It doesn't bring people into church. It doesn't bring them into community. But if you play with it in your mind, if you dance with it, if you build with it, you just might come to understand or even deepen your own faith. Just sort of touch up against things. You, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that before. That is important. You know that I've been asking folks to write their faith in 20 words or less and been putting them up on our, on our faith board. And we have had some wonderful, insightful bits of theology. So, so these are actually from our board. The biosphere is the manifestation of God on earth. Like that? The biosphere is the manifestation of God on earth, which is essentially panentheism. I mean, if you want to be a formal theologian about it. Panentheism. Everything exists inside of God. Everything's a manifestation of God. Everything exists inside God. And then, and then another one on the board, we had God is in all living things, including us. Huh. That's a good one too. And, and that's actually pantheism, if you're keeping score, and I, I'm sure you are. So, so pantheism, God is inside all things. Now, if we're going to put those things together... I mean, if we're equally confident that God is in the world and the world is in God and that God is in us and that we are in God, are we good with that? <laughs> well, you actually might get the Trinity from that. You see, God, God is the creator of the world and the world has its life within God. Follow me? That's one point on the triangle. Now, Jesus, the Son, is the expression of God in the world. Right? The world isn't in Jesus, but Jesus is in the world. So now we have the second part of the triangle. And then the Spirit. The Spirit is God in the world and in us. 
third point of a triangle. And now we have the Trinity. Now, one of the great things about such a Trinity that I've just described, and it pretty much is the classic Trinity. Well, here's what I love about it. Pantheists, right, God is in everything, and panentheists, everything is in God, they're very often confused with each other, you know, for each other at theology conventions, you know, the name tags don't help much. Um, but the thing is, they really don't like getting confused for each other because they don't agree. God is in all things. No, all things are in God. No, you're wrong. Yes, I'm Before we get to slapping, the cool thing is, even though they absolutely disagree with each other, somehow they coexist in the Trinity. When I allow myself a mystical explanation of God without having to make it work perfectly, I just see the connection. Suddenly I realize that disparate opinions and different perspectives can be brought together and gloriously coexist. The Trinity brings together two very different perspectives of God. All things are in God, and God is in all things. We could build on that. Or maybe, maybe we should be dancing. God, Jesus, and the Spirit just dancing around and round and round, and it's hard to tell who's who. You know, the, the interactions make them hard to distinguish from one another. You can't really see one without seeing the other. It, it, it's like stirring up a wonderful stew, right? Stir it up and I can smell garlic and paprika and chili powder, and I'm not sure which is which. Is that the paprika? Is that the, I don't, it's just chili. And I want to taste it all. I want to dance. I don't care if I understand it. I just want to dance. Our faith board offers us the poem Footprints as a statement of the faith. And, and, and the love of God and a promise that God has a plan. That's on our faith board. I know myself better as I know God. That's on our faith board. And what does any of that mean? I don't know what those expressions mean, except that they just feel kind of right. I, I just, I can dance to that. I don't have to sit there and examine it and, and go at the grammar of that. No, no, I just dance. It brings different perspectives together. And, and as they dance, we feel a connection to God and to community. And we realize that we're not alone. The Trinity you want to build? You want to dance. Do you want to deepen or, or do you want to broaden your faith? I want to build first. And so I want to start with something fundamental, okay? God beyond me. Bigger than me. More than me, which is pretty straightforward, don't you think? It's not very demanding to say, yeah, no, God is, is more than me. But it does have implications. If God is beyond me, then really God is not like me. God is beyond me. God loves people. God loves humanity. But God is not people. God is not humanity, which is kind of wonderful at times because, you know, People are fallible and corruptible and they have hidden agendas. But the God that, that I'm invested in, the God that I would describe who is so much more than me is not like me. So I can say that God is not fallible or corruptible and I can trust God completely. God has no need for hidden agendas. No, that, that's, a, that's a human thing. No, God just loves the world. And there's no weakness in God. There's no way for God to let me down. That starts with me acknowledging that God is more, more than me. And embracing that, I just want to dance. Dancing intimately with God as God intimately creates the world, right? Taking time and acting with love and intention. 
When I embrace the creation story that way, suddenly now I'm not theorizing or watching a cosmic event. I'm participating in a holy dance. And creation's not an accident. It's an intentional act. It's an act of love. The Trinity reveals to me a God who creates the world and says, this is good. Not an accident. Not the spoils of war. This is good. Are you getting it? You see, I can reason who God is in relation to creation and to me. And then as I dance with God, I... I appreciate the, the joy and the truth that creation is not simply a byproduct of the divine life. No, it is the intention of the divine. As I dance in that, that we are all part of this divine intention, I begin to respect creation in a new way. As I revel in this creation, I infer from the world that God is living and evolving, present in life, death, and rebirth. It's all there awe-inspiring, based on so many experiences of nature. You know, as I, as I walk in the park or look out over a lush valley, explore a desert, or just, or just get up early enough in the morning that I can see the sunrise and experience beyond words that holy presence in the quiet moments. Oh, such a dance. And as long as I keep dancing, I remain open to more experiences, not sentimentally repeating the old over and over again, but finding new expressions, new experiences of God all around me. God in creation, creation in God. Back to the Lego. I build Jesus. You know, the stories of my faith tell me that Jesus is also God's intention. Not just a guy who got it so right that we call him the Son of God. No, no, but God intentionally telling us who God is. That's what the Trinity asserts. The Trinity asserts that God and Jesus are always together, that they are equal. And so, so, Jesus didn't just become part of the Trinity. The Trinity expresses who God is, and who, part of who God is, is Jesus. Jesus is God saying, do you want to know my character? My likes, my dislikes, what, what love really looks like? If you want to know those things, you've been pretty good figuring some of it out for yourself, I know. But allow me to make the following statement. And that's Jesus. The life, the teachings, the actions, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, that's God's statement about God's character. What love looks like through God's eyes. And when I see that, when I recognize that, I can, I can start to build on that. <laughs> and I can dance. And as I dance with Jesus, I, I, I come to understand, really appreciate that we can also reject God because we did reject Jesus. We really can turn away from love because we did turn away from Jesus. We can be so self-involved that we blind ourselves to the love that is being offered us. We actually can refuse to dance. Now, you see, I didn't learn that from the God who created the universe. I learned that from the Jesus who went to the cross. And my understanding of God requires both. And the Trinity reminds me of that. I need both. It's not one side. It's not one point. But there's more. The building continues, right? So there is the God that I infer from creation and experience in creation the God that I know from Scripture, and there is God's direct statement to me, to us, in Jesus. But there's also this ongoing dance, a back and forth that continues long after I've closed my Bible. 
an experience that continues to this day and will be there tomorrow and the next, like a wind upon the waters. A choreography that takes my, my current experience and my newest thoughts and the experience of feeling that holiness deep within me takes all of those things together. That's the Holy Spirit. With the dance continuing, I am never done learning or celebrating. I don't need to be afraid of new ideas. With God in me, Seriously, Norm, too many words, holy jumping. <laughs> you know what, all I really want to say is that when we talk about the Trinity, we talk about a cosmic God and a local God, we talk about God within, God without, we talk about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, whatever it is we're talking about, the thing is that all these things come together to express God, not as a one, but as community. That's the point. That really is the point of the Trinity. God is experienced and expressed best in community. Community that brings all the disparate parts together. Community. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God described in Trinity, experienced and expressed in community, we come as your beloved community in prayer. We pray in the midst of community, in the hustle and bustle, noise and confusion, struggle and joy that is our life. We give thanks for our garage sale, not simply for its benefit to the financial health of our church, but for the way that it has brought us together as volunteers working on a project, laughing and sighing, being family together. For the way that it brings community together, buyers and deal makers, neighbors and politicians, faces we haven't seen in so long, friends that we have been missing, and new friends with whom we are now creating connection. As your community, we have many worries and concerns, hopes and joys, and when we are together, we discover that pain is lessened when we share and joy is increased when we share. And all of these things seem better when they're shared with you. And so we share our hurts and concerns. From wildfires in Nova Scotia and Western Canada, to concerns about the future as grocery prices remain high and yesterday's budget doesn't work today. Creator God, be with us and remind us that we are more than our struggles. Redeemer Jesus, show us how to live. Challenge us to love without fear and find new ways for all of your children to be safe, fed, clothed, hopeful and invested in the future. Sustainer Spirit, inspire us to act in the world in such a way that we may bring peace and hope to community, even as we find peace and hope for ourselves. As your community, we pray for those who not only celebrate Pride Month, but also live for and are alive because of pride and embrace the diversity of human love and expression, especially the two-spirited, lesbian, bi, gay, trans, queer, non-binary and fluid folk who have been shut out and shut down by too much of the world for far too long. As your community, we pray for those who are experiencing change in their lives moving to new places, following new calls, experiencing change, and all of us wondering if we can do it. 
Creator God, embrace us and assure us that you have made us, you have called us to be more than we sometimes imagine, and we can, we will do it. Redeemer Jesus, walk with us each step of the way, reminding us what truly matters in giving us the example of how to love the world and ourselves. Sustaining Spirit, inspire us to not only let go with grace, but also step forward with hope and excitement, knowing that the adventures that lie ahead will be shared and holy. We pray in the names and the truth of the Spirit, the Creator, and the one who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Go forth from this moment and love the world. Go forth from this moment and dance. Go forth from this moment and, and build. Go forth from this moment and experience and express the Trinity. God, the creator who, who gives us life. Jesus who walks with us and reveals God's presence in the world and, and the Holy Spirit, God's presence that dwells within and, and enlivens us, invigorates us, inspires us to live lovingly in the world. You don't have to understand it to do it. Just love and know that you're not alone until we gather again, virtually or in person. Amen.